Hello everybody and welcome back to Robert's Reviews. Today is Friday, which means that I'm continuing the Pirates of the Caribbean series, which was requested to me. And if you have anything you want me to watch, request it in the comments below and I will add it to my schedule. Just know that it won't be until next year that I get to it because my list is like ridiculously long. But today we are on number two out of five that are currently out. There is at least one in development, but uh, we're on two out of five for now. Um, and today we're gonna be talking about Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest. Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest, was released in 2006. It was written by Ted Elliott and Terry Rossio, and directed by Gore Verbinski, which I don't remember exactly, but I'm pretty confident it's the same people that did the first one. And this happens a few years after the first one. I think the first one was 2003. So this is three years later, so that's quite a bit of a gap between a, a first one and a second one. But no spoilers, of course, but the general gist of this film is we pick up sometime after the first film. It doesn't really tell you exactly how long, and I honestly wish that it did because there's a lot of weird things. Like, some parts of the film feel like it might be immediately after, and there are some parts which feel like it is much longer. It depends on which person you're looking at, because from, you know, Johnny Depp's Pirates, uh, Jack Sparrow, it feels like it could be a while afterwards. But if you're looking at, you know, the other people, it feels like it could be a lot, like, more closer to the first one. It's really dumb how they don't really tell you the time period after the first one, but whatever. Not gonna talk about that for too long. I'm just, I, I'm frustrated about it, okay? I am. But basically, the idea of the film is that there is Davy Jones, of course, Davy Jones Lucker. Um, and the general gist is that he is alive because he can't go onto the sea and he's cursed to the sea, he can't go on land. Um, and he, his heart is out of his body and in a chest that he has buried somewhere. And the idea is the person who holds the heart can tell him what to do and where to go and all this jazz. So it's interesting, it's an interesting like back and forth between who has the heart and stuff. Um, and so of course everyone's after it, but there are two other people who are going after them. So they have, oh, it's so annoying. We have Jack Sparrow who's looking to get the heart so that he can use it to like his advantage. We have Davy Jones' people who are looking for the heart so they can protect it um, from Jack Sparrow, but they can't go on land. Um, and then we have Orlando Bloom and Kiara Knightley's characters who are basically trying to get the heart to give to the captain so that they can go free and stuff. It's kind of a we an interesting idea, and I think, I think the, the story works. Like it's, it's an intriguing idea for a story. I just don't think it was very well executed. I think the acting is fine. I think that Johnny Depp was a little worse than in the first one, in my opinion, um, mainly because I think they rely too much on physical gags, particularly in this very long scene about him being caught up with these Indian tribes and him trying to get away. It's just all physical gags. And I, I love Johnny Depp a lot. But, and he's funny, but he's not very physical. He's not a very physical actor. He's much more of a tell a, a funny joke kind of guy. Um, hence the, I got a job out of there, earth, I got a job out of there, earth, which I think is it's one of the best things I've ever seen in my life. I think it's absolutely top tier, one of my favorite mo moments in movie history. It's just like, I got a job out of there, I think it's absolutely hilarious. Um, but then like most of the, the rest of the film, he's just kind of eh. And same with the other people. I mean, Orlando Bloom and, and Keanu Knightley are both equally like eh. But I think the issue is like the characters just are kind of like, ugh. Like, those characters don't have enough motivation for me. They, they mention it in the beginning and they forget about it, and then by the end they're like, oh yeah, we should probably get that heart, yeah? And it's just like, ugh, it kind of drags with them even just talking about it. They're like, yep, and we're gonna do this, this, this. And then they never really do any of it, and like, it's so annoying because you never know who's on whose side. Even Jack doesn't know whose side he's on, and honestly, they mention it in the film. They're like, we don't know whose side he's on. And he's like, me either. And it's like, okay, great, but like, can we take a step back and like, focus on who's who here because I just don't like the unbalanced feel we get to the film where we start off kind of like okay I like how this is going to be more of an action adventure film and then it just kind of gets into this weird like war film but without there being a war it's uh it's kind of annoying but like all this being said it's still not a bad film like it's one that I would rewatch not after seeing the first one the first one's better than this in my opinion um but I just don't think it quite lived up to the like absolute fantasticness that I think the first one was. Like even the first one wasn't perfect, but I, I think it's absolutely more entertaining. I think this one is even a little bit longer. I don't know that for sure, I didn't check, but I think it is longer. Uh, if it's not longer, it definitely feels longer, that's for sure. 
Overall, I think that the film is a good idea. I think that the sequel for the first one makes sense. The first one was very successful. This one, I think, also was successful. But with a tighter script, I think would have been like much nicer to actually complete the story. If they tighten the script a little bit, cut like maybe even just half an hour out of it, and just make it more focused on the characters, more so than the situation at hand, I think it could have been a more like a better delivery for a sequel. And you know, there's like three or four more of these at least, and so it's it feels. Like, we're kind of already dredging in the snow, and we still have a lot way to go. And I know that the next one is filmed back to back to this one, so I'm excited to see how close it is to this one. I have not seen any of the other ones. I have previously seen the first one and the second one, um, before I reviewed them for the channel, of course, um, which when I rewatched them. But I, I have not at all seen any of the other ones, so I have no clue what to expect for them. I don't know if they're better or worse. I have no clue. So follow me along, follow along with me as I try to figure that out. But I'm gonna go ahead and give Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest a B minus. It's a fine sequel, but certainly not the best. I think they could have tightened the script and made it a lot better, but they just kind of made it loosey goosey and it just didn't quite work for me, I think. But if you liked the video, definitely subscribe and like the video. Subscribing goes a long way. You all have no idea. It's just so, so helpful. Um, but I want to thank you guys for supporting me. It's been so much fun with these past like year uh, doing this. We're almost at the year mark, by the way, so that's really exciting. But uh, I just want to thank you guys so, so much for watching the video. And as always, keep watching movies and television. Stay educated, and I'll see you guys in the next video.